In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, today Holy Mother Church gives us a beautiful set of readings to reflect on the sacraments. We hear in our epistle today a teaching on baptism, that we who have been baptized with Christ are baptized into his death. And then we hear in the Holy Gospel of how Christ our Lord fed the 4,000. And that's a sign of when he feeds the multitudes for the last 2,000 years at the altar of the Lord. Baptism and the Eucharist. The two greatest of the sacraments. One that admits us into the life of grace and the other one that sustains us in this exile from paradise. In one, we are joined to Christ himself through his death and resurrection. And in the other, we receive him as food. Christ, our Savior, enters into us and we are made new by receiving him upon our tongue. But the church gives us these readings not merely to reflect on the sacraments, but to reflect on how these sacraments transform our lives in a very real sense, how these sacraments become our lives. The writing of St. Paul today is not merely that we should be baptized, that's clearly there as well, but that when we are baptized, we are baptized into Christ's death and into his resurrection. Not as a moment in time, but as an ongoing reality as something that changes the whole of our life from the moment of our baptism until we are taken up in glory. Many of us don't remember our baptism, or if we do, it may be just a brief memory, unless we were baptized as adults. But you have never stopped living your baptism. Your baptism has been a reality, a part of your life, since that moment that the water touched your head. And the writings of St. Paul are so profound for us today because the whole of our life is one lived as one baptized. Listen to what he says. All who are baptized into Christ Jesus are baptized into his death. For we are buried together with him by baptism unto death that as Christ is risen from the dead by the glory of the Father so we also may walk in newness of life. What happened on the day of your baptism was that you died with Christ, and then you rose with him. And every day since then, there has been that constant call to die and rise with Christ. There is a reason why we are called the baptized, for the whole of our life is nothing more than the living out of this baptism. And in a very beautiful way, St. Paul says it in this way. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. We have been planted into his death. This is an image of a seed placed in the ground, but the ground into which it is placed is the death of Christ. It is the cross. And if we are planted in his death, we bear fruit for eternal life. We are each of us like plants growing from the death of Christ, for we are planted into his death. So often in modern times, the Christian life is, tried to, is made appealing to the world. We talk about how Christianity makes us cool, how it gives us happiness, and so forth. How often do we speak about Christianity as being the best way to die? How often do we speak of our faith as the very way to enter into the death of Christ? How often we should put on our billboards, come, die with Christ. But that's what we're called to. That's the life that we're supposed to live. Because there is no resurrection except through the cross. 
There is no newness of life unless we have been planted into His death. And as we grow in our walk with Christ, we are really growing in the walk to Calvary, the walk to be crucified with Him, the Via Dolorosa, the way of the cross. That is the Christian life. For just as Pontius Pilate washed his fingers when he condemned Christ to death, so you were washed in baptism and condemned to death with Christ as well. And since that day, whether willingly or unwillingly, you have been on the way to your crucifixion, walking with your cross on your back next to our Savior. But the reason why we can take this journey with joy is not because it's a happy journey in the sense that the world would understand happiness, but because it's the only journey in which we can truly find life. It's the only journey in which we can find that for which our souls were made, that we can find union with our Savior. And the task of our life of faith is really the task of dying on our way to death. You and I, one day, will die. There's no getting around that. There is no cure for death except death itself. And so you and I are invited to make that death happen here and now. Join yourself to the death of Christ. That's the only way to be joined to the resurrection. How do we join ourselves to his death? Well, in our tradition, three things are given to us. Three ways to join the death of Christ above all else. And they're the three things that are given to us each Lent. The reason for this is because in Lent we live in a special way what we are meant to live all the days of our life. And that's why even though we're in this season of after Pentecost, it is still a time in which we're called to live those things given to us in Lent. The genius, the logic of Lent is something we see in all of our life. There is no resurrection without death. When you're preparing for something You need to set aside whatever else you might be doing so that you can focus on the thing you're preparing for, a little death. And so in Lent, we set aside some things in order to take up that preparation for Easter. In Advent, we set aside some things to prepare ourselves for Christmas. And even traditionally, we set aside some things on the vigils or the nights before great feast days to prepare ourselves for those great feast days, like All Saints' Day. And so in Lent, we are given the three things. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. The three ways we can enter into the death of Christ. If you think about it, these three things relate to how we give up so many good things in our life to take hold of that best thing which is to come. In other words, what does it take to have pleasure in life now it takes time. You need to dedicate time to something in order to get pleasure out of it. It takes money. You have to set aside money for yourself in order to obtain pleasure. And then there's the pleasure itself. And so, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. By praying, we dedicate, we sacrifice time. We bring to death time in our life. Time that is wasted on God when it could be spent on other things. And then in almsgiving, we set aside money, our resources, to care for the poor. Money and resources wasted on the poor when they could be spent on other things. And then in fasting, we even set aside some of the pleasures of food and drink. A full stomach that we might dedicate ourselves more fully to God. By praying, by fasting, and by giving to those in need, we come to die to ourselves. Death takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, and it takes a lot of discipline. And that's the invitation we have before us today. Today. 
to be planted into his death? What would it look like to increase your prayer? To spend more time in prayer, thinking about the things to come, the world and the life to come, rather than this life. I think about a young woman preparing for marriage. She's not going to be focused on this or that pleasure that happens right now. She's going to be focused on the marriage that's to come, preparing for the wedding day, preparing to join herself to her husband-to-be. That should be our way too. We should be focused just the same on preparing for our marriage to the spouse of our soul and dedicate that time to prayer, to thinking of the life of heaven. And then there's fasting. Our modern world is all about convenience. It's all about gratification in the moment. Fasting is not about dieting. It's not about losing calories. It's about giving up those things which are good but not the best here and now so that we can obtain the best in the life to come. It's about dying a little to ourself. What would it look like to renew your commitment to fasting? Perhaps every Friday. The church asks us to do penance every Friday. And whether that is giving up meat on Friday or some other penance outside of Lent, each of us is called to commit ourselves to a Friday dedicated to the cross. What would that look like in your life? To let each Friday be a day in which you die a little so that you can live in eternal life. And then there's almsgiving. Beloved, let us love the poor. When we give to the poor, when we sacrifice from ourselves to give to the poor, we are doing two extraordinary things. We are proclaiming that money is not our God, that we are not living for this life, we are living for the life to come, and then we are loving Christ in those who are the least. We are loving the poor because in them we see Christ. And by healing their wounds, we heal the wounds of our Savior. And there are different ways in which people go about giving alms. Sometimes people will say, I'll give it this percentage, and then the rest I'll use for myself. But perhaps an even bolder way is to say, I will use what I need for myself, and then with the rest... I will purchase eternal life. Not in the sense that I can earn eternal life, but in the sense that I store up for myself those treasures that are in heaven. With this amount, I will give to Christ in the least. It's an emphasis on what I can give rather than an emphasis on what I can get. Because I'm living not for this moment, but for the life to come. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. A life dedicated to the death with Christ that we might rise to newness of life with Him. And I think in a special way, perhaps, there are some of you here today who are not yet married, still considering what you're going to do with your life. And maybe God is calling you to an even more radical death with Christ. Maybe he is calling you to give your whole life, to consecrate your life as a priest or religious, a monk or a nun. What a joy it is to see those who lay down their life in the most radical of ways. What would it look like if your life was an offering offered with Christ on the cross? What would it look like if your whole life was that dying that you may rise again, that being planted in the death of Christ. What a beautiful thought. It brings us to the Holy Gospel today and to a line that I think is worth sitting on. We know this story very well, 
the feeding of the 4,000. And it reminds, me, it reminds us of Christ feeding us here with His own body. But one thing that often gets looked over is what Christ said. I have compassion on the multitude, for behold, they have now been with me three days. Here were men and women who spent three days away from city, away from any town, three days without food to hear Christ speak. And yet, they did not even at that moment know that He is God. They had not witnessed the death or resurrection of this man that they came to see. If only we had their kind of devotion. If only we had the kind of devotion that said that to live and even to die with Christ is worth more than filling our stomachs. Three days. Three days without food to hear this man speak. And yet here we are now in the presence of Him who died and rose for us. Christ had compassion on them after their three days of fasting. And He fed them with food. It appeared miraculous, but it was ordinary food that they could eat. But what happens here and now? Here and now, Christ fills you with Himself. Not food that will last only a little while, or food that only fills the stomach, but the bread of life. Christ, our Savior Himself. And on your tongue will be laid Him who died for you. 2,000 years ago, 4,000 stayed in the wilderness three days without eating so they could hear Him speak. What will you do so that you can receive Him on your tongue? How will you die to yourself so that you can be ready so that you can be the best possible vessel to receive Christ our Savior on your tongue? And what will you do so that when this life is over, you can walk into heaven and join Him forever? You only have one life to die. Spend it well. You can spend it chasing after this or that thing here and now, and then death will come, and then what? Or you can spend it on eternal life for yourself and others. You can stay those three days with our Lord in the wilderness, knowing that He will fill you in this life, here at the altar, and in the life to come, with even the image of His face. Die now, because you won't get another chance afterwards. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.